here's a video about balancing redox reactions in both acidic and basic solutions. So the steps to balancing redox reactions are a little bit more complicated than uh, regular reactions because they have to be both atom balanced and electron balanced. So the first thing you'll want to do is split the reaction into its half reactions based on the changing oxidation states. So you want to identify what's being oxidized and what's being reduced. Then you're going to balance all of the elements in the equation other than oxygen and hydrogen. Next, we balance oxygen atoms by adding the appropriate number of water molecules to the opposite side of the equation. And then we can balance the hydrogen atoms, including those added in step two, by adding H plus ions to the opposite side of the equation. Once we've balanced all of our atoms, then we need to add up all of the charges on each side and make them equal by adding enough electrons to the more positive side. Next, the electrons that are produced in one step and that are consumed in the other step, in the other half reaction, those must be balanced as well. So if they are not equal, you can multiply the entire equation by the appropriate integer so that we have the same number of electrons on both sides of our two half reactions. Next, we can combine those half reactions together canceling out any electrons to form a balanced equation. And any common terms should be canceled out as well. Lastly, if the reaction is occurring in basic conditions, we have one more step to balancing. Uh, if there's any H plus ions in the equation and it's occurring in basic conditions, uh, those H plus ions will be neutralized. So to account for this, we're going to add hydroxide ions to each side to balance out H plus ions and form water. And then again, we can cancel out any water molecules on the opposite sides of the equation. So we want to balance this chemical equation here. So first thing that we want to do is start to figure out some oxidation states here. So from our oxidation rules, we know that oxygen is going to be minus 2. So that means that this uh, chromium has to be plus 6. So let's look at why that is. So we have 7 of these oxygens, so that gives me minus 14. And we have uh, a minus 2 charge here. So basically, I need something that's going to add up to plus 12 for these two chromium atoms. So that's going to be plus 6. HNO2, so oxygen is minus 2. H is plus 1. So how do we know what hydrogen is going to be? So this is a neutral molecule, so the oxidation state should add up uh, to 0 uh, for this molecule. So oxygen is minus 2, and there's two of them, so that gives me negative 4. And hydrogen is plus 1. So these charges should all add up to 0. So that's going to be plus 3 for nitrogen. The next one is just a monatomic ion, so the oxidation state is the same as its charge. And then on the nitrate, NO3 minus, this is a molecule that has a charge overall. So when I add up the oxidation states, it should give me minus 1. So oxygen is going to be minus 2, and there's 3 of them, which gives me a total of minus 6. So in order for this to have a minus 1 charge, the oxidation state on nitrogen must be plus 5. So now we can look at how our oxidation states change to figure out what's being oxidized and what's being reduced. So if you look at the chromium, uh, the chromium is going from plus 6 to plus 3. So its oxidation state is being reduced. If we look at nitrogen, nitrogen goes from plus 3 to plus 5. So its oxidation state increased, which means that is our oxidation half reaction. So now what I'm going to do is just write our two half reactions. And then we're going to balance each one. So for this half reaction, the first thing we need to balance is the chromium. 
Once we take care of everything other than hydrogen and oxygen, then we need to deal with oxygen. So on this side of the equation, I have seven oxygens. So I'm going to add seven H2O to my product side here. So I have seven oxygens on both sides. Now I need to take care of H plus. So this is going to be a total of 14 H pluses. So I need to add 14 H plus to my reactant side. So now that I've balanced all of our atoms, we need to handle the uh, electrons. So we're going to add up the charge on both sides. So the 14 H pluses gives us uh, plus 14. And then this chromate ion is going to give us minus 2. So that adds up to plus 12. On this side, we have plus 6. So the water is neutral, and there's two of these Cr3 pluses. So I want to make sure that the charges on both sides are the same. They add up to the same. So right now, I've got plus 12 on this side. So how many electrons do I need to add to bring this down to plus 6? So I'm going to need to add 6 electrons here. So now I want to repeat the same procedure, this time with the other half reaction. Uh, so here I have HNO2 becoming uh, HO3 minus. So the nitrogen is already balanced. I have one and one, so I'm not going to mess with that. Uh, but I do need to balance the amount of oxygen. So on this side, I have three, and on this side, I have two. So I'm going to need to add an additional water uh, to this side so that I have a total of three oxygens on both sides. Now I want to go ahead and balance the H+. Plus. So I have two H pluses here and another one here, so I'm going to need to add three H plus. Just like before, now that we're atom balanced, we have to worry about our electrons. So I'm going to add up the charges on both sides. So my reactants in this case are both neutral, and my products here are going to add up to plus two. So I have plus three from this hydrogen and minus one from this nitrate, which gives us our plus two. So in order to make these neutral, I'm going to need to add a certain number of electrons so that this plus two ends up being a zero. So I need to add two electrons onto this side. So now the next thing that we want to do is make sure that uh, the number of electrons being produced and the number of electrons being consumed is the same. So here I have six, and here I only have two. So to make those numbers match, I'm just going to take my bottom equation here and triple it. So when I do that, I'm going to have triple everything, but I'm also going to have those six electrons which will be equal to the six electrons in my reduction reaction. So here are those half equations that we just came up with. I just went ahead and did my math here, multiplying this equation by three. Uh, so now what I need to do is combine these equations together to form one balanced equation. And we can cancel out common terms. So we're going to cancel out those six electrons. We have those on opposite sides of the arrow. We can also cancel out some of this water. So instead of 7H2O, these three H2Os cancel out, so we're left with 4H2O. We can also uh, take care of these H pluses. So these nine H pluses are going to cancel out nine H pluses here. So that's going to leave me with five H pluses. And now that I've canceled out all my terms, I can just combine everything together to get my overall balanced equation. So at this point, we're done with this, uh, with this equation. But if this was in basic conditions, this H plus wouldn't be able to exist because it would get neutralized. So here is the balanced equation in acidic or in uh, neutral conditions.
So if we were to balance this equation in basic conditions, we'd have another step to do. So if the reaction is occurring in basic conditions, any H plus ions will be neutralized. So we're going to add OH minus ions to each side to balance out those H plus ions and form water. So I have five H pluses on this side. So what I'm going to need to do is add five hydroxides on both sides. Again, we want to keep this balanced. Now these five OHs and these five H pluses, those will neutralize and instead we're going to get five H2Os. So we can once again cancel out some water here. So these four H2Os on this side can cancel out to one H2O on this side. And then we can just rewrite our final equation here. So this is that same equation, but balanced in basic conditions.